Professor Buckingham here, back with a cold-ass conclusion to the great man-age drama of YouTube. In today's lesson, we'll be chronologically covering the beef between myself and the Danny Mullen Ensemble. And, before we all take our plaid skirts off, I'll be returning to my old occupation and giving all parties involved a letter grade. With that said, we'll begin the lesson that I have titled, The True Power of Mayonnaise. It all started back when I was a 14-year-old boy partying and causing tomfoolery. When one of my friends would get majorly out of hand, either being belligerent or breaking my things, I had one simple trick to remedy the situation. I would cover them in mayonnaise. Whether it was quelling my friend Harry's shark-eyed lunacy, or letting Donnie know that I was upset he broke my trampoline, mayoing people became my trademark way to put somebody in their place. Why mayo, you might ask? Well, once you're covered in mayonnaise, you begin to reevaluate things. How did I get here? Why did this happen? Maybe it's my fault. To me, it was a hilarious way to deal with otherwise tumultuous situations, and it worked. The only known footage I have of the old school mayoing days is 240p cell phone footage from 2011, where I'm squirting mayonnaise on the head of my passed out best friend, Harry. I believe this was the first and most undeserved mayoing in Harry's three-time mayo career, but still something we all look back on fondly. The mayonnaise days only lasted for a short while. 2013 was the final time I mayoed any of my friends. After that, I put the trick to rest. Never to see the light of day again. That is, until 2021. When the power of mayonnaise rose from the ashes like the glorious condiment phoenix of old. Eight years had it rested until one man's ego got so big, I had no choice but to bring it back from the grave. This brings us to June of 2020, when after becoming a $3,000 patron to Danny's Release the Kraken tier, he flew out to Maryland to film a video with me. After this, I was invited out to LA by Danny's canine co-host, Leo Dottavio, first in July for just a few days, then to live with him during the month of November. Just one week after moving in with Leo, I was blacklisted by Mayo Mullen from working with his crew members. Disappointed by the undeserved blacklisting, I left LA and continued working on my YouTube channel. Flash forward six months to April of 2021, I'm in Austin, Texas and get word from YouTuber Nerdballer TV that he had received a call from the mayonnaise overlord himself, Daniel Mullen. In this call, he was told I was a creepy, obsessive stalker and that he could not stay neutral on me. He had to pick a side. Quote, don't be a pussy. Now, I had been on 6th Street in Austin every Saturday for a month. So, needless to say, Danny picked the wrong time to come to town. On what I believe was Easter morning around 1am, I spot one, Daniel Mullen, dressed like a war veteran, acting mentally handicapped and sitting in a wheelchair. Without hesitation, the gods of mayonnaise swept beneath me and set forth a hellman's hurricane directly upon Danny's cheekbones. In other words, I mayoed that fool. What's up, bitch? In the words of my dear friend and collaborator, Terry Hesticles, there's something beautiful about a man pretending to be a disabled war vet being humiliated in public. Regardless, next thing I knew, I was staring dead into the eyes of a blacked out Nico Villacresis who proceeded to shove me three times. What's good? Hey, What's up? Blue. What's good? What's up, yeah. Nico? What are you filming, bitch? <laughs> to which I responded with a warning leg kick, which in my mind meant, hey, stop pushing me. I don't want to push you back and break your camera. I was promptly tackled by the Austin police, handcuffed, and taken off 6th Street. Hey, 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 hey. Stop it! Stop. Stop. After the mayoing, Danny left 6th Street to get cleaned up. He was hanging out with a few other creators that night, several of which happened to be my canaries. These canaries were reporting to me what Danny's next move would be. I was told four things by them. Danny gave Nico a star of valor for his bravery. Nasty comments were made about a deceased relative of mine. Danny, Leo, and Nico thought I was in jail and charges were being pressed. And finally, that Danny was going to make a podcast about me that, in his words, would end my YouTube career.
So upon returning home to Maryland that Sunday afternoon, I began preparing my rebuttal to what I had hoped would be an all-encompassing telling of why Danny blacklisted me, straight from the horse's mouth. That Tuesday, the Leo and Danny show number 83, Brandon Buckingham Attacks Danny, was released. In this video, dozens of lies were tossed back and forth between Mayo Mullen and Leo Backstabio. They were painting this picture that I was an obsessed, creepy, mentally unwell stalker who copied Danny's every move and was trying to become him. They insisted that unprovoked, I viciously attacked Nico, punched him, kicked him multiple times, one of which was in the testicles, and was ultimately thrown to the ground with one hand by the camera wielding Nico. From their footage, the story was almost believable. And on every social media platform, I was being slammed with hate messages, dislikes, and fury. The next upload on the timeline came from Danny, where he went on his Patreon podcast and stated he thought I would come out and say, this got completely out of hand, I had a few drinks, and that I would try to apologize. He also stated he knew I was going to get sunfished and that I would try to slither under the responsibility of the whole thing and blame a misunderstanding. The next upload comes from the Johnny Mitchell Show episode 22 where Leo D'Otavio appears as a guest. In this video, Leo claims I was tased the night of the mayoing, calls me privileged, says he'll pray for me, and insists he's too nice of a guy. Johnny the Snake Mitchell brings up me getting raped in prison, says I have nothing to live for, claims that he thinks I'm capable of murder, and then proceeds to wish death upon me twice. Now finally, in the timeline comes an upload from yours truly. The cold ass clapback titled, Danny Mullen blacklisted me. In this video I point out the dozens of times Danny and Leo lied about me and I showed my ace in the hole. I played footage of my angle from the night of the mayoing. In this footage you can see a drunk Nico coming at me in a stupor, shoving me three times, no punches being thrown, no multiple kicks, no nut shot, no Nico throwing me to the ground, and no reason to trust another word that Leo and Danny say. After my upload the tides begin to turn. Danny and Leo are now being slammed with hate messages, dislikes, and fury. They are becoming the sunfish. And in a fit of false confidence and egotistical rage, a shirtless Leo D'Otavio uploads the tell-all classic, My Side of the Story, The Truth. In this video, he starts off by calling his audience incels, claims Danny doesn't have time to respond, insists we all watch Mad Men, does an incredible Peaky Blinders impersonation, tells me my friends are against me, says I'm genuinely creepy with women, calls me a suicidal weirdo, and alternates between making awkward girl faces and psychotic smiles in a shallow attempt to appear unfazed by the whole situation. This video pretty much sealed the deal in a lot of people's minds that something was wrong with this Leo guy, and that Danny Danny probably wouldn't have a good rebuttal to my response. This brings us to Danny's second try at covering the situation. The Leo and Danny show number 84. Danny responds. In an almost deja vu inducing video, Danny goes on to claim that it was all a misunderstanding, and he attempts to slither under the responsibility of the situation. He maintains that he never watched my video, Danny Mullen blacklisted me, and he says he can see how, given my perspective, that I was upset about how things transpired. But he wholeheartedly maintained I kicked Nico in the nuts, that he only blacklisted me to Leo and his producer Austin, not Nerdballer TV, and downplayed the severity of everything. This podcast was at first being decently received by audiences, and Leo the brainiac Tatavio saw his golden opportunity. He had deleted his first response, where he exposed himself as an unhinged maniac, and thought he could upload a second video. This one, cleverly titled, Leo Responds, took a bit of a different aim. When attacking doesn't work, switch to apologizing. In this video, he says calling me a suicidal weirdo was just a personal jab. He also goes on to apologize for calling his audience incels, and even apologizes for telling everyone to watch Peaky Blinders and Mad Men. But even this video is at first being decently received by audiences. People are forgiving Leo and believing this incredibly disingenuous attempt at an apology. So now it's time again for your cold-ass boy to respond. I released the video titled, Danny Mullen backtracks, Leo D'Otavio breaks down, where I go over the alternate reality and address what would have happened if I was on the losing end of this whole thing. I expose Leo for trying to get his pecker sucked by Ivy Wren, highlighting some of the great memes that were shared, and explaining why everyone shouldn't be so quick to forgive these two for how they treated me. This video was up for two hours and had already gotten 20,000 views and over a thousand comments. It was hitting the algorithm hard until suddenly, it was gone. I look on Instagram to find out that as a result of my video, Low IQ Leo's girlfriend dumps him. And he goes off and decides to copyright strike my most recent video, removing it from YouTube entirely. Not only did he copyright strike that video, but he also copyright struck my previous video, 
Danny Mullen blacklisted me. I then receive a string of nine texts from Leo Tavio, where he starts out by saying he has Ivy Wren admitting that she never said he cornered her and that he's going to take me to court. I read this and immediately recheck my video to see what I said. In my video, you can clearly hear I never said anything about him cornering Ivy. So I guess he made up this entire cornering Ivy situation out of thin air. He then proceeds to send me screenshots of messages between him and Ivy where she's telling him that he did in fact discuss her sucking his dick. He follows these messages up by saying, See you in court, buddy. Never asked her to suck my dick. You'll see. To which again, I don't respond. About two hours later, he texts me this message. You said you wanted to hook up with a 17-year-old to chase Jacob Couch's best friend. Oh boy, that's not okay. I guess this was the beginning stages of a wild idea Leo had where he would make up a story to try and act like I wanted to hook up with a minor. I read this and started laughing like I hope this dude comes out with a story like that cause he'll be finished. But Leo decides to shoot himself in the foot another way. At about 4am that night while I'm still recording the now Patreon exclusive video titled Danny Mullen is going to delete my YouTube channel, I get a notification that Leo has copyright struck my video titled Skinny Dipping in Venice Beach. The first two videos Leo copyright struck were commentary videos. They very clearly fell within fair use and he had no grounds to copyright strike them. But this third video that Leo strikes is a video that only exists on my channel. I filmed it, edited it, and completely own it. Leo's only connection to this video is that he appears in it. He could have filed a privacy complaint, which wouldn't have worked anyways, but his dumbass copyright struck it. So Leo thinks he's given me a third strike, but because the first two strikes were moments apart, I guess they only counted as one. Meaning, now I have two strikes. And at this point, people are telling me to private all my videos, don't upload on my main channel, and I'm like, screw that. I'm going to upload this video exposing the crap they are doing to me and bank off the fact that the audience will not allow my channel to be unjustly deleted. So I upload my video, Danny Mullen is going to delete my YouTube channel. And hours later, what do you know? I see this video has now been copyright struck and removed, giving me a third and final strike. This video was copyright struck for its thumbnail. It's the same exact thumbnail that I used in this video, featuring me in a grocery store surrounded by mayonnaise. So it's pretty evident Leo has gone off the rails completely abusing YouTube's copyright system. I get a message from YouTube saying my channel is pending deletion, and I'll be honest, at the time, I was pretty worried. So four days go by, and my channel is still pending deletion. All four of my videos are still copyright struck, and it becomes pretty clear Leo is committing to this whole trying to get my channel deleted thing. Then, this Sunday, I noticed that my video Danny Mullen blacklisted me had been reinstated, but three of my other videos were still down. The next day, I wake up and see that all of my videos are reinstated, but I check my email and see that two of them had been processed by YouTube's copyright team. I suppose this means Leo wanted to keep two strikes on my channel to leverage me. Obviously, I can't know that for sure, but I do know that two of the videos were reinstated by YouTube. In the emails confirming this, I can see what Leo said to try to get my videos deleted. For the video, Danny Mullen is going to delete my YouTube channel. Leo wrote, Using a thumbnail from the Leo and Danny show without my permission. Also is slandering me in this video, asking his fans to get revenge. The last sentence is hilarious because all I was asking my fans to do was message Leo and Danny about the copyright strikes until all of them were removed. I mean, the guy was trying to delete my channel. What does he expect me to do? Then for the video, Danny Mullen backtracks Leo Tavia responds. Leo wrote, he uses my images and videos from my personal channel throughout his video, also defaming. So as you can see, not a very well thought out plea to YouTube to try to get my videos taken down. Like defamation has anything to do with copyright law. Honestly, I bet Leo thought he could copyright claim my videos anonymously. I bet he did not realize it was going to say Leo Tavio did it. Which is pretty funny to me to think about him doing that and then being like, oh my god, he knows it's me. But again, just speculating. So my videos are back up and on episode 85 of the Leo and Danny show, Leo is nowhere to be found. Danny says this about his co-host leo did go off the deep end a little bit he is having some hard times right now and he was having some especially hard times after brandon released his second video and leo copyright struck a bunch of brandon's videos i'm sure he didn't love hearing danny say that Danny also talks about how he feels bad for the people he talked shit about, even going as far as to say he felt because of karma he may have deserved this. 
all these people I used to talk shit on constantly, I feel bad now because I know what it feels like to be at the receiving end oh, yeah. of a Danny Mullen fan bombardment. Yeah. So I've I really think karmically I did fucking deserve this. Like Jack Denmo, Balin Levine, Rumon, yeah. and Willie G might have been the fucking worst, dude. Poor Willie G. And then in typical Danny Mullen fashion, his ego gets the best of him and he blows his otherwise perfect apology and downplays everything while claiming he doesn't mean to downplay everything. Danny Danny was kind of mean which i disagree with i think it was misunderstandings yeah i don't think i was ever mean and i dispute a couple of times i've been accused of being mean like i verified those with austin and leo but that's basically it yeah i, I don't mean to downplay and if, if you are pissed at the channel or me i don't mean to downplay your yeah, anger so again it's deja vu he's trying to blame a misunderstanding and slither under the responsibility of the whole thing and while i don't think he can grasp why what he did was actually wrong he undoubtedly does learn a lesson from this whole thing which for me is exactly what I wanted. This brings us to yesterday, our most recent update on the situation. I get word that 34 year old Leo Dottavio is pretty much trying to intimidate a 19 year old Ivy Wren into rescinding her allegations towards him. He's still texting her saying he's going to take her to court and sue her and is maintaining he never asked her to suck his dick and she needs to agree with him. So that's the latest and greatest from good old Leo Dottavio. Now let's get into the cold ass facts of everything. Danny's main channel and his podcast very rarely get even close to 5% dislikes. But during this whole debacle, things have been a bit different. The Leo and Danny Show episode 83 has 1.5 thousand likes and 2.2 thousand dislikes. The Leo and Danny Show episode 84 has 2,000 likes and 3.1 thousand dislikes. The Johnny Mitchell Show number 22 has 175 likes and 446 dislikes. Last but not least, Leo Dottavio's heartfelt apology titled Leo Responds has 1.1 thousand likes and 2.4 thousand dislikes. The comment section on each and every one of these videos are a merciless battleground against these guys absolutely hammering them for the bullshit they pulled. Danny Mullen lost over 3,000 subscribers during the whole mayonnaise debacle, falling from 540,000 subscribers to 537,000. Leo Dottavio lost approximately 1,100 subscribers, falling from 31,000 to 29.9 thousand. And my channel gained well over 7,000 subscribers from this whole thing, climbing from 24,000 to 31,000. This means I have officially passed Leo Dottavio and subscribers. If Leo ever mentions my name again, please tell him to stop clout chasing. And to anyone who says I'd be nothing without Danny, please refer to my subscriber count and the subscriber count of his subordinates who constantly appear in all his videos. Not only that, but prior to this Mayo saga, my video with Danny wasn't even among the top five most viewed videos on my channel. The proof is in the pudding. Now for Instagram. The Danny Mullen regime got four of my Instagram posts deleted over the course of the Manet saga, resulting in my account being shadow banned. While Danny himself elected to delete one of his very own Instagram posts because of how bad he was getting dragged in the comments section. Not only that, but both Leo and Danny completely turned their comments off on their most recent Instagram posts. They also went on an insanely impressive blocking and comment deleting spree that must have taken them hours. Throughout all of this, I did receive a lot of hate comments on my Instagram, but I gained well over 2,000 followers. While I'm sure Danny and Leo probably lost several hundred from blocking people alone. Rumblings on Danny Mullen's subreddit of a beef between him and I date back months. Once they were given the full story of what happened between us, they turned on him. And with the help of my subreddit, The Buckingham Show, a tag team of me making mania ensued. It was beautiful, and an homage is included in my previous video at 13 minutes and 14 seconds. Danny Mullen reaped what he sowed. He had built his entire career around being an asshole to people in public, but always claimed it was an act. He would act like an egotistical narcissist, but then hide behind the fact that it was all for show. His audience believed every word he said like it was the word of the Lord, and they really trusted his honesty. The Danny Mullen regime would attack anyone Danny said to attack. No sunfish was safe. So when the great mayonnaise drama of YouTube began to unfold, his audience was primed for attack. Only this time, he would be the target of his audience. 31-year-old Mayo Mullen became the sunfish and he could not handle it. He resorted to trying to find a way out of the situation any way he could and he even cried about it to his college-aged girlfriend. This is the epitome of someone who could dish it out but couldn't take it. It's the classic story of a grade school bully that couldn't handle the heat once the tables were turned. This tough guy facade Danny portrayed was absolutely shattered. He was proven to have very thin skin and a very big ego. This entire drama is the most raw testament you can find to the true power of mayonnaise. 
With one little squirt of mayonnaise, Danny rethought all his actions. He now empathizes with people he used to bully. He has perspective. He feels bad. And he is going to be a changed man. God damn. This stuff really is powerful. With that said, I'm going to turn the clocks back to my previous occupation. If you didn't know, I used to be an elementary school art teacher. So I think it's only fitting to give everyone involved in this whole drama a letter grade. After all, it is some serious schoolgirl shit. Before we do that, I want to say I'm starting a Patreon podcast called The Cold Ass Podcast. On episode one, we have none other than the Grand Papa. In this episode, Papa shares his opinion on the Mayo drama, gives an update on his health, and talks about what he's been up to lately. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so check it out. Now, let's get to everyone's letter grade, starting off from worst to best. Up first is Johnny the Snake Mitchell. This guy doesn't even get a letter grade. He's just expelled. We need him gone. Get him out of here. He's done. Finished. Up next is Leandro Dottavio. And to nobody's surprise, you receive a very well-deserved F. Thanks for trying to delete my channel, Leo. I really appreciate it. Oh yeah, and give those feet a rest, Leo. I'm sure your toes are really tired of being shot at. Maybe I'll see you in court. Next, we have the leader of the Mayo Militia, Daniel Mullen. You receive the shocking grade of F. You blacklisted me for no reason, really failed to take accountability for any of your actions, proved yourself to be a very serious liar, but I think in time you'll end up thanking me for this whole situation. Your ego was way out of line and you really needed it checked. If you do ever feel like thanking me, don't thank me. Thank Mayonnaise. Here we have a grade for one, Nico Villacresis. Neeks, you receive an F. This grade is for lying about me kicking you in the balls and going on Twitter, likening yourself to MMA flyweight world champion Demetrius Johnson after he was kicked in the nuts and continued fighting. Nico, I really got a kick out of you accepting that medal from Danny like the sycophantic soldier that you are, but I do gotta say, you really let Pawpaw down. Now we have Austin Schlosser. You receive a D. You tried acting like we were friends and you were neutral in the whole situation, but I saw some of your live stream and you're desperately trying to defend Danny the whole time. I get it. He's your boss. You got to do what you got to do. But my man, you don't get paid enough to behave like that. Following Austina Ballerina is the one and only Brooks Chris Crossover. Brooks, you receive a D plus. You too tried to operate under the guise of being neutral, but you threw your friend Reckless Ben under the bus saying that Leo never censored him. Then you deleted that video when you found out Leo was trying to delete my channel. And all in all, I really don't think you handled it that well. But Brooks, I love you, man. You got a great heart, no hard feelings. I just think your allegiance to Danny Mullen clouded your decision making. Last but not least on the side of my enemies, we have Ian Thompson. You receive a B. You stayed level-headed throughout the whole situation. You were the voice of reason. You did still maintain I kicked Nico in the nuts, so if it wasn't for that, you would have received an A. Ian, you handled yourself very well, especially when you consider that you get paid more than anyone else in Danny's crew, so you had the most to lose in the situation. Thank you for being a good person, Ian. Now we're on to the side of the good guys. It's my boy, Hooligan Christian. You get a B plus, my friend. Thanks for letting me stay at your house. Thanks for driving me to 6th Street the night I mayo Danny. And thanks for riding hard with me afterwards. Exposing Leo for trying to get you to delete your comment. And making jokes aimed at them. All in all, I really appreciate you as a friend. You're my guy. Here we have one reckless Ben. You, my friend, get an A. The two videos you dropped memeing on Danny Mullen were hilarious. These are titled, I'm being censored and Danny Mullen is copying me if you haven't seen them. Ben, you're a great content creator and I really appreciate all your support. You're one of a kind, my friend. Up next, we have Jadon. You receive an A+. The same day I met you, I told you all about the blacklist situation, and you had my back enough to call Danny and Leo out on your Instagram story. You had nothing to gain. I didn't ask you to do it. You barely knew me, and you still stood for what's right. That's a rare thing to find in someone, Jadon, and I really appreciate you, man. Major shout out to you. Next up is the one and only, Sup, boy, a.k.a. Marco. You can find him on Instagram at last call if you want to show him some love. Marco, you receive an A+. When push came to shove, Marco had my back. And for that, I thank you, brother. Few friends are as real as Marco. He's a genuine cold-ass rider. And finally, we have the one and only Kegel Weagle the Eagle. You undoubtedly deserve an A++. Nobody rode harder for me throughout this whole situation, and that classic line you delivered to a mayonnaise covered Danny Mullen was hilarious. Who are you? I'm Kegel Weagle the Eagle. You are a disgusting human being. You're the one covered in mayonnaise, dude. Thank you for believing in me, Keegan. You're a great friend. I know you'll do big things on YouTube for the rest of 2021. And everyone who's watching, please go check out my boy Kegel Weagle's channel. He deserves it. 
Now I just want to give a special shout out to my canaries that helped make this all possible. You know who you are. I love you. As well as my Discord friend, George, aka God, and the Redditor Undergrader. These two guys have shown me massive support and it hasn't gone unnoticed. It's crazy how all of this started with one squirt of a mayonnaise bottle. Hopefully this entire lesson has proved my point. This concludes my lesson plan, but first, I'd like to do a little something to an article of clothing that Leo calls my favorite. Here is the world-renowned salmon jean jacket. It's only fitting that I first cover it in mayonnaise, and second, rip it in half. This stuff is disgusting. <laughs>